Thank you for the introduction. So uh, we make our site. We are a Stuttgart-based software as a service company that helps manufacturing enterprises solve complex challenges around their supply chains and their products. And we do this by delivering fully automated digital twins of how products are made. And um, essentially, when companies today want to solve any complexity around their products and their supply chains, they have three major issues that they haven't solved so far. And one is, whenever you want to make a decision on a complexity of a product, you still require experts to solve this. You need to go to an expert, they need to do research, they need to do modeling, and uh, basically a week, maybe a month, or a couple of months later, you'll have an answer to take a decision. An example for that is product design. When we're looking at designing more ecological products, a product designer today needs to go to a life cycle assessment specialist in order to get an answer uh, how sustainable a certain material is. This can take a week, can take two weeks, maybe a month as well. And you're missing, on one hand, as a company opportunities, or you're posing yourself to a larger risk. There's a couple of companies that have tried to solve this with technology like business intelligence, data warehouses, and such, um, by putting more and more product data from different systems together. However, the data is so dispersed and so complex um, that most of those um, initiatives fail. And another point is some of the data just doesn't exist. When you're a large manufacturer now and you ask your suppliers, what's the product carbon footprint of what you're supplying to me? Most of the time you won't have an answer. And this is data that is not existing with inside companies, but uh, it, it, ex it exists outside. And what we've done is basically, we solved this by creating the world's largest supply chain and material database to date in theory. In theory, because we haven't actually built anything of our own. Uh, we actually connect our software as a service platform to over 140 supply chain and material databases um, and basically take our customer's product world in terms of data from ERP, PLM, CAT systems and any other system that holds relevant product data and map it versus those integrated databases, surfacing those digital twins of products and how they are made. As, we anal as you can analyze with our platform your products across more than 50 different categories, um, there's a multitude of use cases you can apply it. However, we see three major challenges that are a common threat across our entire customer base. And one is really for organizations how to get to net zero. And the toughest part is the products because for a manufacturing company, more, almost 90% of the emissions come from within the supply chain. And we help by delivering fully automated reporting on products and their emissions um, to really get an understanding across the entire product portfolio in terms of sustainability. Um, this is fully automated scope-free reporting, uh, fully automated life cycle assessments. And to give a bit of an anecdote here, um, outside of Makersite, there's around 150,000 products that have a life cycle assessment attached to it. Um, our customers have calculated over 20 million life cycle assessments in the last year alone. But the other aspect is really, um, when you want to achieve net zero, it's not experts that are in the driver's seat, it's procurement, it's product design. They need the data and they need the tooling in order to actually make decisions on a daily basis. So what we do, we eliminate the need for experts for a lot of those decisions and uh, give procurement and product design the data to analyze their products in multiple categories in context of sustainability. And that ties to another aspect where we help, it's product design. Helping product designers not go for any question, every question to an expert, but really have all the data to make material decisions and design choices so they can bring their product faster to market. And the other aspect is really, um, there's a lot of geopolitical conflicts, um, there's natural catastrophes, we had experienced lockdowns that impacted supply chains. We deliver fully transparent supply chain models to our customers of their products, and we also attach risk data to it so that they have an alerting system that enables them to react fastly whenever any issues of their products occur. So um, to round it up, really um, we're 
a bit of an odd kind of startup because most of the startups that go out there, they're sort of marketing led and then product follows. We, on the other hand, um, have done it a bit differently. Um, we were founded in 2018. Um, however, our CEO already started working on the product since 2016. And really, since last year, We've not done anything in terms of marketing or in terms of sales really going out there. We just worked on a product and that makes us a bit unique because we have a very mature product and only since last year we tackled the market. However, as we have a very unique value proposition, we already count the likes of Microsoft, Procter Gamble, Cummins, Vestas to our customer base where we're helping them solve exactly these challenges. And um, to actually um, welcome another one, another potential new customer uh, on stage that will soon follow on this logo site. I want to introduce Stefan from Scheffler right now who will talk about what we did for them in the pilot stage. Thank you, Julian. I hope you can hear me. It's okay. Ah, yes, okay. Uh, my name is Stefan Neuschiffer-Uwe from Scheffler in Herzog and Aurach. And uh, we made a POC with, hmm? yeah, we made a POC with uh, MakerSite, and I think I can say it was very successful. The starting point of the story was the or were the sustainability goals of Scheffler, and one of the sustainability goals is the sustainability sustainability of raw materials. We want to reduce the uh, carbon footprint of the raw materials by 25 percent by 2030, and Scheffler will be climate neutral by 2040. And Scheffler produce, produces uh, in series since last year uh, electric motors, and uh, most of them are permanent motors. Oh. Can you see the slide? Can I see the slide? Sorry. Okay, Neil, one slide back, please. Okay, then as uh, <laughs> on the left side, you see the, you see the, the sustainability goals of Scheffler I explained before, and the electric motors are in the middle of the slide, and most of them are permanent magnets in the motor, and uh, it is like in any other fields in the industry. This supply chain is dominated by Chinese companies. Uh, most of the magnets come from China, and that are more than 90% of it. The next slide, please. Here you see it's, it's a long way from the mine to the magnet, ready to assemble in an electric motor. At first, at the, at the mine, you have to grab the, uh, the ore, then you have to do a beneficiation step. This is concentrate. You made some additional steps and get the uh, rare earth with high purity. Then you can uh, alloy and you get the magnet powder. And the last step is the production of the magnet. Maybe you sinter the magnets. And as I said, the actual supply chain is the Chinese supply chain. And Scheffler is just looking for an alternative uh, supply chain. We call it the optimized supply chain. The mining can be located in Australia, for example, or in Canada. The next two steps can be uh, implemented in Norway. There, Scheffler made the first step for the realization. We signed a, a five-year contract last April. And the last two steps can be done, for example, elsewhere in Europe. And now the question for MakerSite was, uh, is uh, this optimized supply chain only an alternative or is it better in terms of this carbon footprint? And this is a question for a maker side to answer uh, in the POC. And here you see the result on the left side. It's a Zenki diagram. It looks a little bit strange. I highlighted uh, two, uh, th three uh, materials, the neodymium, and the disposium and the electricity. And uh, MakerSite implemented both supply chains in a very short time. And uh, here's the result. And you see at the bottom, uh, it's 
really uh, lower uh, carbon footprint there. And the reason for this is mostly the better electricity carbon footprint in Norway. And now, this is the first point, and we're just looking forward to make further work with uh, the maker side. And uh, if you need more details, just visit it on the booth. Thank you.